Get my free book called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint by going to balloverseas.com. Let's get to it. Dreball on dreallday.com, balloverseas.com. This is a question that gets asked all the time that I want to address here in this video. And I'm making this video specifically for the players who are trying to get on right now, especially those of you who are actually let me just get to it. Question is, how much money can I make? playing basketball overseas. Now, I'm sure I've talked about this many times in written format. I've answered people's questions. I don't know if I talked about it in detail in a video before, but I wanted to make one video specifically on this subject. And again, this video, I'm making this for the players who are trying to get on or maybe you're looking at some offers or some opportunities right now. Now, for me, I came out of a Division three school. And coming out of that D3, nobody from my school had ever gone pro. We didn't have a pipeline from our school to any team overseas. I didn't have any connections. I didn't know anybody who played ball overseas. So when it came time for me to get my opportunity or when I was hustling to create my opportunities, my mindset was any chance I could get to get my foot in the door, I'm taking it. And I'm bringing that up to tell you this. If you right now don't have multiple offers, if you don't have multiple teams offering you contracts and you're trying to decide between which one, if you don't have multiple agents coming to you asking you, like, yo, I want to represent you, I want to work with you, I can you know, help you get on. If you don't have mul multiple, not one, but multiple opportunities right now, your mentality needs to be whatever I can do to get my foot in the door so I can get in the room, that's what I need to do. And what does that have to do with money? Well, if you only got one opportunity, does, does it really matter? <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't. The thing about basketball overseas is that there is no uh, salary cap. There's no pay scale because there's no players association. The NBA has a players association. There, that's basically the union, like at any company, like steel workers, coal miners, uh, school teachers. They have a union. Construction workers, there's a union, and the union sets boundaries. All right, this is the, uh, the, much, the most anybody can make. This is the least anybody can make. So there's a salary ceiling, there's a salary floor, or at least there's a salary floor for everybody. You work this number of years, you get this much, this much, this many years, you get this much. You basically know exactly how much money you want to make damn near throughout your whole career in many professions. Maybe not necessarily the NBA because you can negotiate, but in a lot of professions like school teachers, construction workers, a lot of times their salaries are just set based on the number of years you work, how many jobs you've done, hours, et cetera, et cetera, roughly. That's just a rough thing. But in basketball, in the NBA, for example, there is a cap. We know the max contracts. You hear players getting max contracts. And there's a floor. So there's a minimum salary in the NBA. The minimum salary in the NBA is in the mid to high six figures, even for a rookie who just came into the league. The lowest you can make. It goes up every year because of the way the salary cap is structured. But the lowest is probably around 400000 maybe even five hundred right now. But the max, you know, we see players making, what, 40, 50 million in a whole season overseas that does not exist there is no players union for overseas basketball there is therefore because there's no players union there's no collective bargaining agreement meaning there's no ironclad contract between the players and the teams which means it's basically the wild west when it comes to money and contracts whatever you can get is what you can get and if a team signs you to a contract that says they're going to pay you ten thousand a month and they don't pay you you can't go to your players union and say, hey, players union, handle this, because it ain't no players union. You would have to call a lawyer on your own and have that lawyer go to that team and work out whatever they got to work out in that country or your agent, if you have an agent, and let them work that thing out. So playing ball overseas, you could make a lot of money. There are players who play overseas who might make a million dollars in a season, not a lot of them. Most of them are guys who have played in the NBA or either were in the NBA or they could be in the NBA, but they took a job overseas and they just like the stability, the situation, whatever, whatever. And there are players who play overseas, Americans, who are playing for free, basically. They're paying, they're getting a place to stay and maybe they get meals and that's pretty much it. They're not actually even, even drawing a salary. That happens overseas. And some of you players who are watching this right now, I'm not even going to uh, shit on players who take those opportunities because some players could look at those guys who are taking the free no pay, no salary opportunities where they're just getting a home and some food to get their foot in the door. They're looking at those players and saying, oh, these players are lowering the market because if they're players who will take no pay to go overseas, but you're like, yo, you got to at least give me a thousand dollars a month or a thousand euros a month 
but then the guy right next to you says, well, I'll do it for free. The team is going to say, well, we'll take the guy who'll do it for free. Well, I'll give a guy a thousand when I can give somebody nothing and get a player either way. And so you might look down on that player who's taking that opportunity, but you got to understand sometimes in life, forget basketball, but sometimes in life, you just got to take the opportunity that you can get to get your foot in the door. And once your foot is in the door, now you prove what you can do. And when you prove that you have some value, you prove that you have some worth, then you have some negotiating power. Then you can go to a team or that same team and say, look, all right, I came in for zero or for $1 or for $150 or whatever it was. And now I proved myself to be worth more than whatever I came in at. Now you got to give me this if you want to keep me around. Or now you got to do this. Now you're going to do that. And if they say no, then you can say, all right, I'm going to take my talents elsewhere. I'm going to go to another team and they're going to give me that. So either you're going to give it to me or they're going to give it to me. But somebody's going to give it to me because I've proven that I'm worth this amount. I've proven that I'm better than this. I've outplayed the opportunity that I came in on. So you players out there who are asking, well, how much money will I make overseas? I've had players ask me this who don't, haven't even had a job. They're like, well, I want to know how much money I can make overseas, you know, because I heard that some players who ain't making nothing. I want to make sure I can make some real money. I haven't had too many players asking me this recently, but in years past, I've had players who would ask me things like this as if they would be saying this to me as if they had some kind of, as if they had some kind of clout or negotiating power here. And I'd be looking at the message like, yo, you haven't played anywhere. You don't have any power to tell anybody what they got to give you because you haven't proven that you're worth even a dollar yet. You got to prove that you're worth it. And if your resume doesn't say it, meaning you didn't come from a D1 school or maybe a high D2, if you came from anything other than that, anything lower than that, the overseas team is looking at you like, yo, we don't even know if you can play at all because look who you was playing against. Look where you played at. You might not even be good. You might not even be a pro level player. You might have to just go over there and just earn your right to demand money. Now, I was lucky when I came in the game, I had an agent, but I would have got a deal with or without an agent. I, I had an agent, luckily, and the agent had a little bit of negotiating power. And he was able to actually get me some money on my first deal. But you might not have an agent. Maybe you have an agent who says, look, they're going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you right now. Like, listen, this team is interested in you and they're willing to get you a flight and bring you over and they'll give you some food and they'll give you something and they'll give you a place to stay. But look, for the first month, they're not giving you a salary. You're going to have to just play, practice every day, play in some games, show them what you can do. And if you're any good, then we can come back to the table with this team and say, all right, now you got to give me a thousand. You got to give me two thousand. You got to give me whatever. And maybe they'll do it. Maybe they won't. But you might have to you might have to get in the door just on that. It's kind of like if you really think about it, for those of you who play ball or everybody who's watching this, you probably play ball. But think about this situation. If this were to happen to you or the possibility of it happening to you. Think of it as an internship. Think of it as an apprenticeship. Think of it as in when you're in school, if you're in college to get a degree, many colleges, depending on the degree you get, they require you to go work an internship, right? You got to work this many hours. You got to put in a 200 hour internship working at some company where you're not getting paid or maybe they'll pay you, but not that much. And it's basically an educational internship. You get the education, but you're not getting any money. And why do you do that? You do that so that number one, you get the experience a life experience that comes with the degree you're going to be getting from that school. And number two, just in case you want to work at that company full time after school, you're proving to that company that you are good. You're proving to the company that you can do the job. You can show up every day. You can follow directions. You can pick up their system. You can fit in with what they got going on so that when you get out of school, you can come back to the table with them and say, hey, Mr. Hiring Manager, you saw me in my internship. I worked here for uh, 12 weeks and I did everything I was supposed to do. Y'all didn't pay me or y'all was paying me $5 an hour. All I got was education credits. Now I'm coming to the table. I'm on a full-time salary. Are y'all willing to hire me based on what you saw me do already? If you did your thing during that internship, they should be at least willing to give you a chance and give you some money. And if they're not willing to, but you proved that you were actually good and you got some documentation that proves you're good, ball players, this is your video resume. In the work world, this might be I don't know, some record of the projects you worked on, uh, positive uh, feedback from somebody with some clout in the organization, a written recommendation, whatever it may be. If you have some clout that shows you can do your thing and they don't want to give you the money, you can go to everybody else and shop yourself around. Say, all right, y'all y'all want to give me money? All right, let me go here, here, here. Let me see who's going, who's going to give me the bag because I've proven that I'm good already. But if you haven't proven anything yet, if you didn't do an internship, if you didn't do an apprenticeship, if you didn't do anything to prove that you're good, even at no money, then how could you expect money? That's just the way that I look at it in life in general. Again, 
we're talking about basketball here, but this is a life thing. If you haven't proven yourself, then what do you got? If you want to be an influencer on the internet, making videos or writing blog posts or doing a podcast, how much do you? How much can you charge your audience when you first come out the gate? You can't charge them anything because they don't know who the hell you are. You haven't proven that you're good. Nobody knows if you have any value, and nobody knows that you could do it consistently. You might put out one video, and the video might explode and, and be a hot video, get a hundred thousand views in a week. But how we know you can you could do it the next time, the next time, and the next time? You got to prove yourself. You can't come to your audience after one video that went viral and say, "All right, everybody, if you want to watch my YouTube videos, you got to sign up for my ten dollars a month subscription." They're like, "Well, who the hell are you?" Nobody's even gonna say that. Nobody's even gonna notice that you said it <laughs> because they're like, "Yo, who are you?" You got to prove yourself first that you're good. Once you've proven that you've, you're good, then you can come to people and say, all right, now this is what it costs. This is how you get in. This is what you get. Even using myself as an example, I put out content for a long time before they even had ads on this platform. There weren't even any ads that you could put on a video. I was still putting out videos. And then I started selling products. And then I started having a membership site. And then I started creating more stuff and selling it. Then I started offering coaching and consulting and all of these things and putting a price tag on my time and my attention. And people will pay it. But that's only because I built up this whole cachet, this whole resume of showing that I could actually do the thing before I could tell people that they had to pay me for it. And again, I'm talking about just business and uh, content and influencing on the internet but this applies this exact same way to the basketball world and it's exactly what I did in the basketball world prove myself that I could play take opportunities that I might have thought might not have been that great but I knew that I could play my way into a better opportunity so all you players out there asking how much money can I make overseas well you could make a million dollars a year you could make nothing but if you haven't proven yourself then again as the saying goes beggars can't be choosers all right if you haven't because there's another guy right next to you. If you say no to that opportunity where they say, well, look, we'll give you a crib, a place to stay, we'll give you some food, and you could be on the team, but we're not going to pay you a salary for a month so you can prove that you can play. And you say, well, that's beneath me. No, I ain't doing it. Cool. There's a person who's coming up right behind you who's going to say, I'll take it, and they're going to take that player. And that player might not even be as good as you, but that player went and proved that they'll do that, they can do their thing. They're not even as good as you, and now at the end of that season, that team is going to say, all right, we'll give you 1500 a month, come back next year. Now that player is in the game. Now that player has their foot in the door. Now that player is known. Now that player has a resume. That player has game film. That player has a professional career. What you got? These are all things that you need to consider as you look at money in basketball, playing ball overseas. And I made this video specifically for those of you who might be coming from situations similar to mine, whether you, where you were playing uh, – D3, NAIA, JUCO, D2, maybe you didn't play college ball at all. Again, you can't be a chooser when you're a beggar at the same time. And I don't mean that in a, a derogatory way. Listen, I was in the same position. These are things that you need to keep in mind as you move forward in your possible overseas career or if you want to have an overseas career. If you want to learn more about that, I put it all in this book. And this book is completely free. It is called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. With this book, you will know everything that you need to do to start your professional or continue your professional basketball career abroad, which means you can get out of that nine to five that you're working. You can finally live out your dreams. You can make sure you get maximum ROI out of your talent, your basketball talent, because we all know that basketball careers are short. And the last thing you want is to be 45, 50 years old wondering, damn, what if I have really taken a shot at playing pro basketball? You don't want to be the person wondering what if or what you could have did with this book, I'll tell you everything you need to do and you can do right now to get yourself into pro basketball, even if you haven't played in the big places, even if you don't have an agent, even if you don't have any game film yet, I can tell you everything you need to do to get everything you need to go play ball overseas. And this is a completely free book. All you're going to do is pay a small shipping and handling charge. Go to balloverseas.com. The link is down there in the video description. Everything you need is right here in this book. How many times I got to tell you? It's right here. Balloverseas.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.